As an Under Secretary General, you have a lot more power, obviously, and uh, the ability to sit at the table with decision makers. But I'm also very aware women's leadership should not be looked at in terms of individual women and only in formal positions. Well, um, I'm a person that uh, strongly believe that we can control our own destiny. I am also a person who uh, values community, which if you think of it, is split into common and unity. And I deeply believe in common humanity. I uh, try to spend my time as much as possible uh, enjoying and, uh, nature, but also allowing nature to speak with me. I'm also a mother, so I do spend uh, quite a lot of time uh, with my children, uh, especially uh, when we are able to travel together. I love to take pictures, <laughs> so I will take pictures of my children, pictures that captures moments of transition. I look for places where my values can be expressed and can flourish. I have found that the Charter of the United Nations speak the deepest to me uh, in terms of the possibility of doing certain kinds of work. To bring these values to life um, in the way in which we can create community to help with the flourishing of uh, human possibilities. I think the question should not be what is it like as a woman in peace building. I think it has to be uh, how do women create peace. Women's leadership should not be looked at in terms of individual women and only in formal positions. We have been exposed to the type of changes that take place at the local level and by very ordinary women the everyday women who believe that they can actually make a change in their own lives and provide better futures for their children. As an Under Secretary General, you have a lot more power, obviously, and uh, the ability to sit at the table with decision makers. So in a sense, it was the playing out of uh, women's leadership. It is actually thinking about not an individual leadership, but what is leadership for and what is power for. And it is, at the end of the day, it is about leadership and power for transformation. Well, I came in at a time when uh, there was a financial crisis that hit our region. This was the 2008 financial crisis. And it was an opportunity for our countries to rethink um, what were the new drivers of growth. And that meant uh, looking of, at development that is more inclusive, that is more sustainable, and that is more resilient, more integrated, and not sector by sector. And we need to use our development to close development gaps, to deal with the environment, and to deal with the vulnerabilities and inequalities that we saw in the Asia-Pacific region. And these are not trade-offs. So I got out of the perspective that if you do these things, they are trade-offs. In fact, I was able to show that these are new drivers of dynamism. I had to handle some of the worst floods in Bangkok, but at the same time, the worst cyclone Nagas that hit Myanmar. Development gains are lost because of natural disasters. So in a sense, um, if we want to have prosperity and shared prosperity, we need to be able to bring all this together and see how can we address them in a holistic and a comprehensive way. I must say one of the most uh, outstanding moments uh, when I was in charge of uh, UNIFEM, which is the uh, United Nations Development Fund for Women. And when I was at the Security Council, and Security Council Resolution 1325 was being adopted. There was a huge applause 
that was never heard of in the Security Council. We had the whole women's community there, uh, so excited. It was a, a very special moment because uh, Security Council Resolution 1325 was built on four pillars. Uh, one of protection, uh, participation, basically being at the peace table and being able to recreate a new society so that we, it doesn't go back to the old, but there's a new possibility of building, building just and inclusive society. My first lecture is more about history, how multilateral governance was birthed. There was so much uh, energy and creativity and positive spirit that we can do it together and there was hu uh, um, wonderful solidarity, the reimagining of the world of possibilities. Uh, I'll be talking about the basic values that are uh, in the UN Charter. There were successes and failures uh, in building the four pillars of the multilateral governance, which, was, uh, which is um, peace and security, uh, sovereignty, um, uh, the issue of what type of development and also issues of human rights. My second lecture uh, will look at the great fractures, meaning that it will look at what are now some of the major challenges and uh, it shows again where we are at a crossroad, a crossroad of breakthrough or breakdown and how have we been able to address them. So I've been looking at, um, again, the COVID-19 and the need for solidarity in order to ensure uh, global health, the climate agenda and what we need to do there. The setting up of a new normative framework and a new mechanism of operationalization and accountability. And my third lecture is uh, on securi securing the future, a new multilateralism. So I'll un help people to understand what the meaning of global commons and uh, how do we secure our global public goods. But our old multilateralism was very much state-centric, cent uh, but this time round, the new multilateralism have got to be from the ground up. There has to be a network multilateralism. These are alliances and communities for change and transformations, a new way of bringing about change. All this will work only if we rebuild trust for the future for our children, because we cannot leave them a world that is so devastated if we take the road of breakdown and not breakthrough. <laughs>